I had already traveled in the astral world so much that it was, I realized that life was most, more amazing than I could ever imagine. And, I, and the physical world was, I wasn't taking it that serious and I couldn't take it that serious anymore. Kensho had an ordinary life in the way most people would call ordinary. He had a career in business administration and a job from eight to five. Yet he was bored with a standard that wasn't providing real fulfillment. Ever since he was a kid, he had had spiritual interests, always wanting to understand what the meaning of life was. When he was in his teenage years, he began having uncontrolled out-of-body experiences that he couldn't understand. And that's when he began studying different schools of mysticism and received practical knowledge to control these experiences and get the most out of them. At that moment, he began to find the answers he was looking for. In 2010, he met his guru, Dharmapa Rinpoche. He quit his job and moved to the foothills of a small town in Guanajuato, Mexico, to study with his guru to, be, to become a Zen Buddhist missionary for the Pragna movement. In 2011, he opened a meditation center in Zamora, Mexico. In this year, he was admitted as a student in the Order of the Yellow Dragon and received his Dharma name, Kensho. Then, in 2012, he moved to San Diego, California, to help establish the Pragna Meditation Center in El Cajon, which is still open today. In San Diego, he became familiar with the teachings of Yogananda and Babaji. In 2014, he opened a meditation center in Prague, Czech Republic. Kensho walks the middle path, which is a type of spiritual path about living life to the fullest among normal people, doing the daily required chores and providing service to others. Kensho's knowledge comes from many mystical sources and the teachings of his guru, Zen Buddhist master, Dharmapa Rinpoche, as well as his life experiences and anecdotes. He currently lives in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Kensho is a Japanese term for the Zen tradition. Ken means seeing, Sho means nature, essence. It is usually translated as seeing one's true nature, that is, the Buddha nature or nature of mind. Okay, so we are here with Arturo, also known as Kensho, for his books about astral projection. And... The first thing I wanted to ask you, well, uh, for our watchers to, to know, what's the difference between a lucid dream and, uh, and astral projection? Well, astral projection is a direct transition of your consciousness from your physical body to your astral body. That means that at all times you are aware of the transition, what it happens when you are no longer in your physical body, and then you start to explore the astral plane. And a lucid dream is when you're dreaming and suddenly you realize that, hey, this is a dream. So then you start to explore the, uh, the lucid dream consciously without, let's say, falling for the ideas or the images or the situations that are happening because you know that those situations are, well, in your mind and... Mm -hmm. You, you don't see the difference between being uh, in the physical and in the dream world. But when you become lucid, you do. You, you see the difference. Mm -hmm. and, and I know you go into it deeper in, in the book. So I, I really recommend people to read it, uh, to know better all the differences. But I really like how you explain the, like the different bodies and this idea that uh, you don't necessarily have to be afraid of it because, uh, for example, there is a series about it now. I don't know if you watched it in Netflix about astral projection. And uh, I don't know what's the name now. I'll, I'll... I've heard about it, but I haven't watched it. But yeah, I, I'm, okay. I'm sure I will. It sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fun. But I mean, it's fiction because it's this idea that someone else can get into your body and, and then people get afraid of it, right? But yes. it's not really so, right? Because what you explain of the different bodies is that every night we do this process, right? And it's like the difference is like if you want to be conscious of it or not, right? Yes, actually, uh, 
in my book, I talk about this because there are also Hollywood films like the Insi yeah. Insidious films. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't watch those ones. <laughs> I mean, they, they are they are fun. Like they are they are good movies. I mean, interesting movies, horror movies, if you like the genre. But uh, <laughs> nothing of that is true. Like uh, you know, in in the film, they portray it as an as an, a skill that just a few people have, and the, and that is such a dangerous skill because ghosts. Uh, can get into your body and possess you, but uh, that's not the truth. The the reality is that we all uh, go in the astral every time we go to bed, every time we start sleeping. It's just that we don't realize it. Right. And so another thing that is very interesting about you is that you actually uh, you are in into Buddhist, right? You do Buddhism. you have a practice of Buddhist. Yes. And I think you relate it somehow, right? Like as you raise your consciousness, it is easier to have these lucid dreams or astral projection practices, right? It is. But, uh, you know, interesting enough, I didn't begin my journey, my spiritual journey in Buddhism. I actually uh, began in, a, in an esoteric uh, association. Okay. And yeah, and this esoteric association, I'd rather not name it okay. because it became, uh, you know, it, its its founder was a real master, but then it became corrupted. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this master, he said that basically every esoteric group in the world had become corrupted. And that he said that in the late 50s. Okay. So, and, you know, it's like he prophesied sort of that the same was going to happen with his group and it actually happened mm -hmm. so uh, so we decided to leave um this group and focus on buddhism as uh, because buddhism is one of the uh philosophies or religions whatever you want to see it that uh, has stayed let's say mostly clean and so we were looking for an institution for a vehicle uh to keep working on our spirituality and help other people to work in their spirituality. And so that's why we chose Buddhism. And yes, Buddhism has a lot of um, associations with astral projection because mm -hmm. in reality, every philosophy and religion in the world actually talks about it. Even Christianity, Taoism, etc. Yeah, they have their esoteric versions, right? That yes. Really lately, they became shut down somehow. Yes, it's like if if you remember, like in the Bible or in the New Testament, mm -hmm. uh, they always talk about uh, visions that they had, and uh, and many of those visions, uh, that's the way of them saying, "I saw this in in the astral world or in a lucid dream." Well, yeah. Yes. Okay. And so you explain, uh, you talk about the different dimensions in the book. And I think you talk about it related to Buddhism, right? Like the, because you explain the different dimensions. Is it related yes. to that or, or it's your own interpretation of it? Well, you know, I, uh, all of those dimensions, I learned about them when I belong to this esoteric group. Okay. But obviously uh, Buddhism, has uh, like the same beliefs, the same uh, like a number of dimensions and explanations. You know, in fact, every philosophy in the world yeah. ha has this. It's just like, you and know, some physics, of them. I mean, they talk about uh, these dimensions as well in physics. Yes. Uh, for instance, uh, I was reading the other day, I was studying the uh, Ghidra seal, the, uh, the tree of the, of the Nordics uh, in the Nordic cos cosmology. Idrasil is like the tree where all the uh, different kingdoms happen, you know, and they have the kingdom of the gods and then they have the kingdom of the giants and the kingdom of humans. And then they also have a kingdom of, of uh, gnomes and, and fairy and elves. So that's the, the that's elements, the right? Yeah. So the way I see it is like, well, that's the, the kingdom of the fourth yeah. dimension. Okay. Yes. Nice. Yeah, yeah, because this is, I mean, and now with ascension and so on, they, they talk about dimensions in so many ways and in so, so many versions and, and so on. Yes, like every culture in the world has its own version of 
of this, but then you compare and you see like, wow, it's it's almost the same. Yeah, that's what I like. It's like uh, maybe you you have your own spiritual awakening, you have your own journey, but then you start reading here and there, and and it's all connected. It's there is a parallel. It's maybe not all the details are exactly the same, but there is a resonance, right? Yeah. Prerequisites for astral travel. Do you believe that you need a certain level of consciousness to be able to do it? Yes, I believe so. Um, but consciousness can be expressed in, in many ways. Yeah. And one of those ways is um, like the willingness to learn and an open mind. And uh, this is why I have two books about astral projection. And in the first one, I don't mention any possible negative experience that can happen in the astral. I don't mention it. Yeah, it can happen, but uh, but you, since the astral world is also the mental world, uh, because the mental world happens in the astral dimension, which is the fifth dimension, um, then if you go there thinking that you're gonna see a ghost or something negative, you might see it because your mind will attract it because in that world, yeah, uh, it happens exactly where your mind is. It's uh, like in this world, we talk about uh, the law of attraction and the law of attraction is real. It's one of the uh, one of the uh, 48 laws of the physical plane. Uh, but here it takes longer for this attraction to happen. Right. But over there, it's instantaneously. So obviously, if if you try to do this with fear, if if you think it's dangerous and you have a you're not open for the experience, then uh, most likely you won't achieve it. Yeah, because uh, your mind will act as a um, prevention mechanism and will not allow you to have the astral experience. So you would recommend a practice like meditation or something like this to calm, calm the mind before yes. maybe getting into it? Yes, absolutely. And um, I can tell you, a lot of examples uh, about a year ago, maybe more uh, with the pandemic, we were all like locked down and we were bored. So I started playing video games in my computer, yeah. Starcraft. <laughs> and uh, and I, I wasn't meditating a lot. And so I was playing uh, Starcraft. And, um, and one night I had this sort of nightmare where I was in a dream and there was a war going on and I would see like a lot of people moving around from one place to another place. It was very noisy and everybody was like crazy. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh my God, it was stressful. And I, I just stopped and said like, I realized I was in a dream. And so that, that time I became lucid and I looked around and everybody was in like fighting and everything. And I was like, stop. And then everybody stopped in the dream, oh. right? Yeah. And, and then I told them, like, I want you to relax. I want you to stop the war. I want you, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what else I told them, but uh, the population in the world, in the dream world, got reduced to one third. And then everybody was, like, cool and calm. And my mind was at ease. And, and so when I woke up, I was like, okay, so all of that, all of that noise, all of that war, was in my mind mm -hmm. because I was playing this video game. So all the impressions that you get during the day, uh, like whatever you watch on the TV, the music you you listen to, the interactions you have, the uh, devices that you might have, all of that you take it. You you your mind actually absorbs it. Yes. And and so it it can be very. Um, very unhealthy for your mind, for your emotions. And so, yes, like uh, meditating, having the practice to meditate at least uh, once every day and just being careful with the noise, you know, with impressions, th that helps a lot to astral project. That's why also uh, I try not to watch uh, telev the TV or Netflix at least one hour before going to bed mm -hmm. so that my mind is is more relaxed and I will not bring those impressions back to my 
to my uh, practice because otherwise it will be more difficult to become lucid or to have the direct astral transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And also I've noticed, for example, that when I was a teenager, for example, I would have lucid dreams once in a while spontaneously. And, and then when I read your book that it was already, I was already starting my spiritual journey. And I mean, I can notice my inner dialogue before and after it just uh, completely different, right? Like the input inputs we have in the mind when we are not like we didn't train it. It just yes. astonishing. And then when you start having doing meditation or whatever you do, that really helps you, you know, to go back to the body or to the heart and be more calm. Then adding your book to it. It just, I started having much more lucid dreams. And I think it's related to what we just talked about, about uh, the level of consciousness that also if you start questioning your reality, what you're living when you are awake, you automatically do that when you are asleep as well, right? So it's easier yeah. to, oh, this doesn't make any sense, you know? When you start, uh, like, maybe there's something that it's not possible. And maybe before I didn't realize, but now it's just in the instantaneously, it's like, this is a dream. <laughs> and sometimes I have the same sensation while I'm awake, right? <laughs> yes. When was your, your last lucid dream? Very recently, because I when I picked up your book, not even doing any mantras nor anything, I, I, I already had a couple of ones, but it's what I told you that it was very difficult to astral project from there. I, I started sleeping again very soon because uh, you mentioned that it is related to, to emotions, right? To being yeah. able to feel emotions and moving from one place to the other. So it's not so much that you physically travel, but you transport yourself through your, through your own emotions, right? what you have around you. Yes, what happens is that um, traveling in the in the astral world, mm -hmm. um, at the beginning I was, I was following the techniques that I learned. In these techniques you call upon your, uh, like your divine masculine or your divine feminine, mm -hmm. and you ask them to be taken wherever. And then, you know, perhaps the instructions that I learned were very simple. So in my logic, I would see myself being transported, like like being pulled to wherever I wanted to move in the astral world. Because and, uh, yes, and, and it was working at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But then I got like trapped, uh, you know, as you told me that it also happened to you, like so and suddenly I would start moving from point A to, to point B. But before arriving to point B, I just got lost on the way. And I would, uh, my consciousness, my awareness would fall into a dream and, and then I wouldn't achieve it. And recently, I actually took uh, a seminar with uh, a workshop, an astral projection workshop with my guru, Dharmapa Rinpoche. And, uh, and he suggested that I needed a new approach because, yes, in the astral, everything happens with the mind and the emotion. So where you put your brain is where you go. So in, in, this, in this case, instead of of imagining myself being uh, pulled or or carried to my destination in the astral. Now what I do is I simply, when I'm in the astral, I feel and I, I imagine that I'm there. And in that moment, you get instantly transported to where you want to go. Wow. <laughs> and it, yeah. it also makes you question, I mean, how much is it, you're actually there or it's you are creating that somehow well like, both things it's both, both things right yeah yes because you know right now the the topic of of uh, quantum physics is really popular mm -hmm. so one concept is that there's a theory that you have there's the particle and there's the wave right mm -hmm. and I, I it might be uh, the other way around but i think when you are the particle, you are seeing yourself in the world um, as an actor, like you are in the world yeah. as an actor. 
And when you are the wave, um, you see yourself as the director, right? Yeah. And so um, the astral world, uh, it has many layers. It's, a, it's the fifth dimension mm -hmm. and it has many layers. Like they, the, the lower layers, layers are the astral dimension. And the astral dimension is like a copy of this world, but it's astral version. I mean, it's a, it's a world where you are also the actor in the astral dimension. But in the, in the uh, higher part of the fifth dimension, mm -hmm. there is the world of the mind. So the world of the mind is, is like the matrix because, it, yeah. because it's, it's an environment where things are being created. So there are techniques to go to the, to the mental plane within the fifth dimension. Basically what you do is that you astral project and once you're in the astral world, you do the same techniques for the direct astral uh, projection, right? In the astral world, like you- uh, You, you talked about that in the second book, right? Yes. yes. So like that, you you know, you just go back to, uh, to resting in the fifth dimension, like you lay down and you do the direct transition. Yeah. And then you get to the fifth dimension, uh, to the, um, sorry, to the mental plane in the fifth dimension. And you start seeing stuff like in third person because you are seeing as the director. So you can directly see how all the ideas that you have, uh, they become alive. So in other words, this world, the world that we live in and the astral dimension was created by our mind and the collective mind, you know? From another so, dimension. In another dimension. And we cannot, and, but we can also create in this, in this physical plane mm -hmm. because we are connected to the to the to the mind yeah our mind exists in that dimension so that's why recently people talk a lot about uh the law of attraction because in reality you can create anything if you think about it because mentally it's uh it's being produced and it might it might manifest it might take longer to manifest in the physical plane mm -hmm. and it has to follow other laws and it might, because of those laws, it might not be exactly as you thought it would be because it has to be adapted, translated to the three-dimensionality, but it happens. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And I think it's happening more and more because uh, in this process of ascension, somehow this uh, manifest manifestation span is is shortening right it's 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 becoming more instant manifestation like you you think about someone and and you find them in the street or whatever yeah yes time time is becoming shorter now uh every day feels that it, that passes by mm -hmm. quicker and um when i when i belong to this uh esoteric group uh they would always say that uh, we were close to this ascension mm -hmm. and they, they would they would say that uh, there will be uh, cosmic alignment alignments that would be uh, really helpful to manifest uh, the reality that we want and for our awareness to ascend uh, but it's also like an opportunity that not everybody will have because uh, and this is what I what they believed and I also believe it because in, all, in order to ascend, a door gets opened now at these moments, like the in, in our present life, it seems like the alignment is already happening. So the door is open and it will remain open for a while and maybe it will be even more open. So it will, it will be stronger. Like this, this that we are feeling, uh, this feeling of ascension will start getting stronger. But what if you're not connected to the same vibration? If you're if you're not by vibrating because all of this ascension requires for you to uh, for your own vibration for your own frequencies your brain frequencies to be uh, higher and so people who are connected all the time to lower vibrations who are too grounded to the world then uh, the theory and I believe it's what's going to happen is that it's it's like a surf wave if if you want to catch a surf wave you need to swim. Yeah at the same speed or otherwise it will not it will not take you so this is what i think is going to happen 
Yeah, it makes sense. And maybe it's not exclusive either, right? Like maybe some are more ready for it and eventually the rest will follow, right? But I guess it's it's about like this, as you said, like this door that open when when a certain number of people is ready, right? Yes, actually, you know, I'm um I'm writing right now the books about knowledge that I've received from the astral dimension. Yeah. Uh, they call it the Akashic Records. And so Yeah, I wanted this, to talk about that too. <laughs> yes. All right. I don't know. I don't know if I should wait. Well, I mean, I'm gonna tell you tell you about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. I'm I'm very interested. <laughs> so this ascension effect that we're ha we're that we're experiencing now happened before to the previous mankind, right? And this is a topic that is it's also very, let's say, controversial. Some people don't believe it because it's related to Atlantis, right? Yeah, I've it's, heard about it too. So, yeah. So so it's it's interesting because what you're telling me about uh, how people will have other opportunities to ascend. It's true because this happened. I was recently, I, I recently saw that this also happened before in the sense that there was a, a wave that took the more the, the most um, enlightened peoples from the previous mankind. Mm -hmm. And they were taken first to uh to the new world, right? And but then there was like a second wave mm -hmm. that took the people that were working in their spirituality but they had not the same level of progress and they were also spared from a catastrophe. Yeah. And they, um, they came later into our world in America, actually. And, uh, and that's really interesting, but that's a yeah. very <laughs> profound topic. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Another time, maybe. And you mentioned two ways to alter to astral project you can either astral project directly when you go to sleep or when you are in a more relaxed state directly and supposedly then you have a more direct experience of the astral plane and you can also project from a lucid dream what would be the difference between the two um well when i first um, started to to have these experiences I was doing so through the direct method. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps it's better if you can do it in that way yeah. because it um, the experience is more clean because you haven't yet got into uh, the dream world. And so we have three different aspects. We have the, the astral world, uh, the dream world, and being lucid in a dream. So... When you are in the dream world, the problem is that you are not conscious and you're seeing stuff that is in your mind. And these things that you're looking at, they are very productive because they are part of your life. Your dream dreams are part of life too. They are, and they are part of reality. They are part of the uh, a different part of the brain. And since you have the, the logic part, the, the one that you uh, mo are mostly aware of, aware of, and then you have the subjective, then you work with these two parts and this creates a balance in your mind. But um, since we are not used to um, to being aware or to meditate, uh, then many times, whatever you dream, you might forget it. And sometimes uh, people say, well, I didn't dream anything. And they, we always dream. It's just that we don't necessarily remember it. And, um, and also, if you, um, if you fall for the dream, if you start believing that, that you are, well, I mean, if you are following the dream, not being aware that you are in the dream, then you miss out a lot of information that you might not consider important or that you might not remember. And um, and so it's always better to be aware in the dream world. And this is easier to do when you have a direct uh, astral projection because you haven't dreamt anything yet. So you don't have to... Uh, get those ideas out of your mind or or to tell your mind like well this is this is not true this is a, well, i mean this is this is the dream uh when you astral project you instantly see the astral world 
and um, and when you lucid dream, um, you you have to like little by little become more aware inside the dream, and in order for the dream elements to go away, and to start seeing a more clearer astral dimension without your the noise from your mind. But it depends on 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 the person too because. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier for some people to astral project directly, and for some other people, it might be easier to uh, to become lucid when dreaming. For instance, um, uh, at the beginning I was pra practicing the direct transition, but then I don't know what happened. Perhaps my my sleep uh, mechanism changed, or something changed related to work or whatever. And I stopped being able to uh, have a direct astral projection when going to bed at night. And so I would uh, still do my practices and I would become lucid when dreaming in the middle of the night. In fact, I just had a, a, a lucid dream this morning. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and it worked the same. It, it's interesting. I was I was in this um, visiting this beach, beach town because I just I just love the beach, you know. Yeah. And there was this beautiful house uh, on the hill overlooking the sea, and it had like it was a round house, so it had like a three hundred and sixty view. Everything was amazing. This is like the an idea that I want. Like in the future, I would like I would love to have a house like that with a three hundred and sixty view, oh. etc. Right. So I was looking at it and I was like. Hmm, I need to research about this house. Uh, by the way, where are we? What's the name of this town? I asked around the people because we were traveling in a group in a van in yeah. the dream. And so nobody knew what to say. Like, what's the name of this place? And people in the in the van were like, well, we were not told. And then I, at that moment, I was like, yes, I'm dreaming. <laughs> so, so I told them like, so what I did is that I pulled my finger yeah. Right, like I did the technique, and yeah. it actually, um, you know, uh, it went like a, like a chewing gum. Like I just, yeah, I just stretch, yeah. stretch my finger yeah. like that, and so I said, like, okay, yes, that's the confirmation that I'm dreaming. Yeah. And I remember I told all the dream characters, and I don't even know if they were dream characters or real people that were having the same dream with me, and I told them, we are dreaming. Look, uh, pull your finger. So everybody started to pull their finger. <laughs> And it stretched out, and so they realized that they were dream that we were dreaming, and that's how I became lucid. So cool. So, yeah. so you see, it's like that was not a direct transition. I was already in the dream, but then I became I became lucid in the dream. Uh, but it, also, I lost this lucidity quicker. I I just have the impression that if you have a direct transition, it's easier to remain aware and conscious that you are in the in the astral world whereas uh mm -hmm. if you if you have a lucid if you become lucid in a dream um you lose the awareness faster because you still have a lot of dream elements mm -hmm. yeah very interesting and what you said that maybe it's easier for for a, for a person one thing or another like for example for me i never go to do an astral projection but i continue trying <laughs> Yes. But for me, it's very easy to lose a dream. And, but then it happens what you said, like sometimes, and I'll tell you how I managed to, to, to be awake, but many times it happens that I get distracted and then I get to get in the dream again. And yeah, some of the more hallucinating experiences I had is when I started like, when I would realize that I was in a dream, uh, what I like that you said is like to, you know, to keep calm. <laughs> Sometimes I don't say for a while, so the characters don't get, you know, <laughs> reactive or something, because then it, it's very easy to wake up, right? And, and so I keep calm, and sometimes I, I, I sit down, and I start, I close my eyes, and I start meditating inside the dream to calm down, you know? Uh-huh. And then from there, like I, I go into the heart and I do the, the same thing I do in, in meditation, which is to call my spirit guides. And sometimes I can see someone, sometimes I can see no one, but I can feel the frequency. And from there, it isn't for me to travel. But sometimes in this travel is what you say, like I, maybe I get lost. <laughs> 
Like once, for example, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk about the, the Akashic Records. I was really excited to get into the Akashic Records and, you know, like find information and so on. And, and then I kept, you know, thinking about it. But then, for example, once I, I ended up in a place that looked like a printing store. Uh -huh. Something like that. And then, but I, I came up. And my head was inside the book or something. It was very strange. And then the pages were very big and they, they were falling on top of my head. <laughs> like, you know, you wanted the Akashic Records, here are the Akashic Records. <laughs> like they, there were books with information, but it wasn't exactly, you know, the temple or, or so on. And so I wanted to ask you also better. And I think it's it's related to what you said about maybe doing the technique to transition into another dimension from that. Otherwise, maybe you stay in the dream dimension and then you get something that is related to it, but it's not exactly where you wanted to go, right? Yes, it's. Um, uh, I also had those experiences where I would uh, go to the, uh, to the Akashic Records in the astral world mm -hmm. and it looked like a, like a huge library. And okay. uh, it's sort of like the same effects would happen so it's easier to uh or it's better to like once you have once you are you know you're dreaming once you are lucid or or you astral project and you're in the astral world mm -hmm. then you lie down and you do the techniques to have another another projection and then that's when you, you're going to see everything as as a third person view okay and when you see everything in a third person view you know that you are already in the in the mental plane, and in that when once you're in the mental plane, then you can ask to go to the uh, astral records, okay. and the experience will be uh, more clear. Like an observer, instead of uh, being the the character. Right? Exactly, exactly like an observer, and that way, uh, yes, it's like you're you're watching, like a for the monitor or something like that it's it's yeah. hyper realistic it's even more realistic than this but you will direct all the uh, where you go and everything all the scenery you are mm -hmm. outside of the matrix when you are in the mental plane you are like in the uh in the back doors of the matrix yeah, yeah and i think a few times i i i achieved it because uh in between i came back to the body and then i left from there and I think then it, it was when I had a more direct experience of it but when I was still kind of inside the dream it was more like there was like interferences yes yes and, and another thing is that you talk about in the book is the sleep paralysis I actually used to have a lot of these dreams when I was a kid and this kind of demon on top of me Mm -hmm. And they were very scary. And then when I learned that it was actually a good sign that you are about to astral project, it just changed my interpretation. And sometimes I, I do this kind of easy when I lucid dream and then um, somehow I come back to, to my room. And sometimes I don't fully get into my body. I just I get into the room and then I, I already know like, okay, I go from here and then I start floating around the house and, and then I, I, I float through the sky or something <laughs> yeah yeah but it's, it's interesting what you're saying about this trip, the sleep paralysis, paralysis because yeah. that was the, the like my first discovery because i would experience it and i would get yeah. freaked out i would imagine that i was getting possessed or something yeah and then when people mention that it was part of astral projection that's when oh okay so i should profit from it yeah. and and then it's not as scary anymore for me uh what you feel like when you feel like somebody's standing on top of you like a demon or whatever it happens for many reasons one of the reasons is that uh the astral body starts to detach from the physical body and so you start feeling sometimes very heavy sometimes very light because those are effects that the astral body has that's one of the reasons why you feel pressure on your on top of you and and sometimes people will say well i saw voices or demons or whatever i mean it could happen and what happens is that normally when people have these experiences and they are not, um, they were not expecting them, they, did, they do not understand them, then they start getting scared. And so by getting scared, they are attracting 
the images of what they are scared of. And so more, I've discovered that most of the time those images are, they come from the mind. Mm. But it can, it can attract some uh, negative entities, which is something because I normally don't want to talk right? about because I don't, wanna, I don't want people to freak out. Mm. But in the end, it's like the, you are completely safe and whatever you attract is because your mind is not trained. And, uh, and so you are attracting what you think of, yes. Yeah, I, I heard a lot about this, like protection and so on in the astral plane and things like that. And, and even even when you are meditating or so on. But as you say, I prefer not to get into it because then you attract it more. And I think it's it's much more, it has a lot to do with vibration, right? And and that's why I, I ask you about if you recommend something like meditation or so, because uh, it really helps to calibrate this vibration and to be able to be in a lighter state that it's it becomes easier to attract your you know like desired states and not uh, fears and and nightmares right yes like meditation uh, impressions that you have but also we live in a world that is exposed to these energies because. Let's say you go to, to work and you live in a big city. I mean, I don't know if I, if you knew this, but I lived in Barcelona for like five weeks. <laughs> I, wa I wanted to move to Barcelona. But in the end, I, I didn't have good experiences in Barcelona. Whoa. And I'm sorry about that. I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so for, so for some reason, um, maybe the place where I was living, I, I started to feel a lot of negative vibes. Perhaps the city yeah, is like it's too crowded, yeah. you know, it's like too crowded and you have many problems. And so, you know, when I would go to bed, I would feel the, the, neg the negative energy or the entities. Oh. Sometimes I would like listen to them roaring and crawling through my window and stuff like that. I mean, Whoa. I don't want to, uh, you know, it sounds scary. Um, so... But I'm, I'm, I've just become more sensitive to this phenomenon. And so... Uh, and but Barcelona it, is a very old city. Like, it, it actually has many legends and stories related to that. And, and I actually, I go less now because it, it's, a, it's a big city. And, and when you're more sensitive, you can... There's a lot in there. <laughs> yeah, but there, there is a quick fix to that. Yeah. that I've recently discovered, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's part of the Mexican culture. I mean, it's something that I didn't follow before. What, what, what we do is that people do, do cleansing, like uh, people do cleansing. So normally they go to, uh, to see a, like a shaman and the shaman, they get them cleaned. I know how to do that. Uh, but the, the, simple, the simplest thing is to buy um, uh, certain plants like sage, and the other one is Ruda. I don't, I don't remember how you call Ruda in English. I think it's Rune or something. Okay, um, I, I so, can take it out and I'll put it in the... Yeah, you, you can Google it like this, uh, um, herbs for protection. And so basically you you uh, put them in, in water, you uh, you make them boil, and then you uh, you strain the, the herbs and you just keep the liquid uh, as a tea. And once the tea cools down, um, because you're not gonna put it on you when it's hot, right? Once it cool, it cools down. You take a shower, and at the end, you pour the liquid onto your body, mm -hmm. and you you don't dry it up with your with a towel. You let it dry on its own, mm -hmm. like air dry, uh, and so that way you can do this once once a week. Or, well, if you live in a stressful city, you can even do it every day. And that will keep you, your aura very clean and any negativity, like, uh, far from you. And this really works. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And and maybe with your intention as well, maybe, because when I, when I take a shower, I also, like, with my intention, like, the, the water that cleans me. And when you had a very stressful day, you can feel it. If you do it with intention, it's very mm -hmm. powerful as well, I think. 
Yes, absolutely. So for sure, if you add one of these powerful herbs, <laughs> it, yes. it can do a lot more. Yeah, okay, let's talk about the Akashic Records. <laughs> okay. So, how can you access the Akashic Records from a lucid dream or from a from an astral projection? Well, uh, the simple way is that once you are in the astral world through astral projection or a lucid dream, you call upon your divine father or your divine mother, and you tell them to take you to the Akashic Records. And most of, most of the time, going to the Akashic Records requires certain merits. Mm -hmm. uh, but most people who are, I believe, already astral projecting or having lucid dreams, I believe al they already have certain merits. So they will be shown uh, certain experiences in the uh, Akashic Records. Uh, they will see some, some things. Uh, but the best method is that once you are in the astral, once you project it to the astral world, then you have another projection mm -hmm. in the astral world, and that will take you to the mental plane. And once you're in the mental plane, you, you ask the same. You ask your divine father, and your divine mother to be taken to the Akashic Records, and that's, um, uh, that's how you will get there. Yeah, it's a... Uh, the procedure is in, in my second book. Second book. Yeah, yeah. I remember you talk about it's it. It's also in English. Sorry, I, I have the Spanish version here, but yeah. Don't it's worry. Also I, I will put it the, the image in English as well. Yes. And I'm doing also another video with the book reviews. Yes. But, you know, like recently, uh, I've been getting a lot of information from the Akashic Records, but uh, not visiting in the astral, actually. Like just uh, through my daily life, through yeah. through meditation, and also through um, uh, like going to natural places. Like the best thing you could do is to go to uh, to nature and over there meditate, do your practices. And then I I was starting getting a lot of of information, right? And this information was like, oh, these are very entertaining thoughts. I used to think at the beginning. Yeah. But later on, I discovered that they were not just thoughts. They were um, they were really information from the Akashic Records, which I was able to verify later on. Uh, for instance, I just visited this archaeological site in in Mexico. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's in my second video that I published in my in my channel. The second new video. The one about the mermaids. About the mermaids, and I didn't want to talk much about the place because I when I was in the place. Right. You I started getting a lot of information, and part of that information told me, like, do not like uh, promote this place because we don't want tourism here, basically. But uh, all the information that I got when I was there, later on, I talked to this friend, and this friend is in in contact with the uh, with the witch holes, uh shamans, mm -hmm. the shamans from the witch holes people, which are like the like the, this indigenous group in Mexico, which have kept their costumes. And uh, and they are, let's say, the most uh, magical in terms of their traditions. And uh, he told me that they believe exactly what I what I experience in that place. I mean, about vortexes and connections to the uh, hollow earth and caves that go to the inner earth and all of that, mm -hmm. and uh, and mermaids and all that. That is the information that I got there, and uh, they already believe that since long time ago. So that's one of the examples of how like you can start accessing the Akashic records because in reality we all have a pineal gland and and we are receiving we are receiving information all the time, vibrations. Uh, we get them. Even if, if that's why living in the big city, we get a lot of information that is toxic and it goes directly into our brain, all the vibrations and frequencies. Mm -hmm. And when we are in nature we our mind is, is clear and can receive the right uh higher vibrations and that's when you can get knowledge from the akashic records and slowly with practice you can start to distinguish between regular thoughts and astra and akashic record thoughts yeah. because akashic rec record uh, thoughts are more inspirational are more spiritual in nature uh, mm -hmm. 
they feel like going back to your childhood and and then you find out that the stuff that you saw or the thoughts that you had um they were real in fact yeah. uh they, they work in many ways sometimes you get like instant information like like you just get knowledge you don't and sometimes you see stuff but you see stuff like the way I've, I've seen stuff it's like the way you normally see a thought like Imagine. let's say you imagine yourself, I don't know, in a mountain, and you can you can see it in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's there. You can you can visualize it. Well, the same thing happens with some thoughts, and then well, it turns out that you find out that those thoughts or those images that you saw, just like a thought, yeah. were actually real or did happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, and I, I feel a lot more guided to go to nature lately. Well, I I'm I'm basically a lot already in nature because it's a small village but i feel like going to almost every day to the forest and it really feels like a clearing like you come back without like you clear your mind like new and it's a lot easier to receive these inspirational thoughts that are not thoughts <laughs> yeah so it's very healthy i try to go there uh at least once a week mm -hmm. Yes. And I also wanted to ask, can you receive healing in the astral plane? Yes, uh, there is a temple that is called the Temple of Alden. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the astral, uh, you can do exactly the same procedure as to go to the to the Akashic Records. You, uh, you ask for the help of your Divine Father and Divine Mother, and you ask them to be taken to the Temple of Alden. And then uh, just imagine yourself going there and you will be taken there. And so you just, uh, you have to use your imagination mm -hmm. to, to see it as a temple, a beautiful place where you're gonna be laid down in this, in this uh, special operations room or like a beautiful bed. And you will imagine the masters of medicine around you, Paracelsus, Hermes, mm -hmm. Trismegistro, uh, Many many masters, uh, Angel Raphael. Yeah, I was with, gonna say angels as well. <laughs> yeah, they are. They they there are some angels like Angel Raphael. He's uh, the angel of medicine. Yeah. And so you start imagining these beings, and you will see them in the astral, and they will provide uh, healing, and it, it will the healing will depend on your on your merits, and on your karma, but most of the time, since if you can already get there in the astral. They will provide assistance because, um, well, it's it's imagine the kind of of awakening that you would you would experience or the the increase in your spirituality mm -hmm. if you go to a place like that and you get healed from the masters. I mean, you would come back to the physical world and and of course you will feel more spiritual and you will believe more and this will be good for your spiritual progress. So most likely you will get assistance. And I've gotten assistance in in the past for some problems, mm -hmm. and uh, in my case, I didn't have any any um, dangerous uh, condition. Yeah. But uh, but they they healed me from a lot of stuff, including when I had the COVID. I I yeah. started feeling much better when I uh, went to the temple of Alden and I and I had had the help from the masters. Yes. So beautiful. And so I guess you can get creative, right? Like if you can imagine it there, you probably can can go there in the astral, right? Yes. Uh, Pablo Picasso used to say it, right? Like if you can imagine it, it's real, right? Because yeah. right. it's true. Like all of those uh, artists, especially like Picasso and Dali, I'm a big fan of Dali. Uh, yeah. the, uh, the surrealists, they were interesting because they were working in esotericism in the modern days. So um, we know, and I've seen it, and my guru has explained it to me, that especially Dali uh, was going, was being able to go to the fourth dimension. Like Salvador Dali was visiting the fourth dimension. And that's, w that's where he was getting all the ideas for his paintings, because that's the kind of, of stuff that you see in the fourth dimension yeah. and uh and there were many um there is this this uh this woman i forgot her name but she's also 
She was also part of the surrealist movement. Leonor, I, Leonor, I forgot her name. And um, and there, there was this guy called Edward James, and he was an an unrecognized uh, son of the King of England. And he lived in Mexico. He moved to Mexico, and he created this this park, uh, which they call the Edward Edward James's Castle, in the in the town of Silitla in San Luis Potosi, Mexico. And they he uh, he started hiring people, workers, to build a park with all of these structures, like stairs going nowhere, and uh, like a castle, like just just beautiful in the jungle. And you see this amazing structures and you realize like this is stuff that he's seeing directly in the fourth dimension and mm -hmm. when i visited this place i started feeling the energy there that that mountain where, where he built stuff there's a vortex there that goes to the fourth dimension and uh and there in in his park there is even this temple that uh that uh he built and it's a uh, it's an esoteric temple and it's got the same design as the one that we had in the in the esoteric group I used to belong to, so that's a confirmation that they they were into it. And uh, and of course Dali also visited the place when he when he visited Mexico. Uh -huh. And I have you know, to introduce you to a friend of mine that he did his PhD about the philosophy of Dali because Dali had a lot of written material that is not so talked about, and it's super interesting. You would love it, I think. I would love it. I would love to read it. <laughs> and yeah, so you, how did you learn about the, because you also talk about elemental magic in the book. How did you learn about all this? Also in the esoteric group you talked about or not? Yes, I, I learned it there. And um, and I've, I've since I go to nature a lot, I started doing my practices. And... Um, and yes, I started getting the effects. Uh, for instance, I once called for the assistance of the uh, of the gnomes and pygmies. Yeah, it's you know it's in a, it's in the it's second the book. book. I remember. <laughs> and um, and I was having this astral projection, and I saw the uh, the the gnomes and pygmies, and they provided us. They were providing assistance. And I saw them exactly as, as they described them. Like they, they were cool. sort of brown in color. Yeah. They looked like like uh, like a mixture between old and young, really weird, <laughs> with their like red cheeks and they had long beard and they, they were they were dressed like workers. And um, and, um, and that was an interesting experience because I saw them mm -hmm. in the astral and like two days later I actually went to the uh, to the forest and I started to do an invocation to call upon them and when I was doing it in, at that moment I suddenly felt something like this and it was like oh my god like the gnomes that it provided us that I saw in the astral like two days ago I was invoking them at that moment uh two days later so in other words what I saw in the astral was their assistance from the future because in the astral, there is no time. So that's why at the same time, when I was calling upon them, I just felt like a, a, a strong intuition of whom that told me like, yes, this is, you're calling them right now, but you saw them Whoa. two days ago in the astral. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I had a similar experience, um, like a kind of prophetic dream when once I had a friend staying over and, like we, we had the strong connection. She was a medium and she was connected to, to spirits and so on. And and this is how I started in all these topics. And, and she stayed once and I woke up earlier than her. And I had a dream where she would wake up and tell me her dream, what she dreamed about. And so I, I woke up for real. Uh, I came to have breakfast and then she wakes up a bit later. She comes over and she says, uh, guess what I dream? And I, I shut down her mouth and I said, don't tell me. And then I told her exactly what she dreamt. <laughs> it's hallucinating, like, whoa. There's no, no time, no space. 
Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so the, this is this is what I mean that the uh, the mental plane is not constrained by time space. The astral, uh, the time does not exist in the astral. Time starts existing in the fourth dimension, just as as Einstein uh, actually uh, mentioned it in in one of his. Uh, I think it was in the theory of relativity. That's where Einstein mentioned that the time exists in the fourth dimension. That's where when time starts. But time is is different in the fourth dimension. But in the in the astral world, in the dream world, there is no time. Uh-huh. And, and it's so, also related to the yeah. yabus. The yabus are the yabus are, must are, be must be that, right? Yes. Like something that we already experienced before. Yes, because it's, we already saw it in the mental plane. Okay. And so if you could, uh, now talking about time, if you could uh, give an advice or a tip to, to your younger self before experimenting all of this magic that you talked about, what would it be? Well, that has to do with my, actually, my third book that I'm writing right now. Okay. Well, I'm writing... The, a third book and a fourth book. One, it's about how to escape from, from this reality, like practical advice, right? And the other one is a novel. But the one about the practical advice on, on how to escape this reality, I think it's related to your question of what would I, I would change because I think I was also going to write it down in that book or I was thinking about it because uh, it had to do with my choice of studies. You know, when I was going to uh, to university, mm -hmm. there were things that I loved, uh, such as architecture, or writing, or even uh, cinema, mm -hmm. uh, marine biology, and archaeology. Yeah. I could have studied any of that because I actually those are things that I love and. These kind of things that you love, that you're passionate about, they are connected straight to your soul. So they are very real, right? But in the end, I chose to study uh, business management mm -hmm. because I started, uh, you know, people would come to the, they would visit us. They would show us graphs of, you know, an architect is the worst paid uh, career. So yeah, so, and then thinking about that, I was like, Okay, so I'll be a business manager because I have the possibility to uh, to earn more money, right? And then I've never worked as a business manager because mm -hmm. I graduated and I had some some work positions in some companies and and uh, they are like entry level, so you are not really managing anything. You are just uh, working for somebody else. And then my soul couldn't take it. Mm -hmm. I worked for for companies. I worked for three different companies and I only managed to work one month in each of them. It's like my body, my mind resisted. Like I just couldn't do it. Like it was just uh, extreme suffering. Yeah. And I, I had this extreme suffering because I had already traveled in the astral world so much that it was, I realized that life was most more amazing than I could ever imagine. And I and the physical world was I wasn't taking it that serious and I couldn't take it that serious anymore because it's not it's not the physical world where I would love to live because of all the situations that are happening. So my advice to my younger self and to every generation that is thinking about making a living is to do what they are passionate about because Confucius Confucius would say, uh do what you love, like work on what you love, and you will not work a single day of your life, something like that, right? Yeah. And that's the truth. So what better advice? This is like, if you realize the whole world, what, the, what people need nowadays is mental health and emotional health. So the moment you should tell them like, well, you're going to love your work. It's not going to be a work because you love it that's going to help you a lot with your mental and okay. and your uh, emotional health. And you will make more money because you will be passionate about it. Absolutely. Right? So that's the advice I would, I, would, I would give to my younger self. So what I wanted to say is that um, you should always study what you're passionate about that, that, and do what you're passionate about. 
instead of um, working towards making other people rich or on something that it's it has it doesn't have to do with what your soul wants or what you're passionate about because if you work on what you want you will not work a single day of your life because you will enjoy it all the way you will make more money it will be healthier for your soul for your mind for your emotions and this will also help you to astral project more and to have other experiences because uh, you will be more aligned to your true self to your quantum version it's like you will be uh, following your own story. And so a lot of gifts will be given to you. Right now, uh, this is a realization that I knew from a long time ago. And there was a part of me that was still part of the system somehow. Because, you know, I've been doing this for like 12 years. Uh, my books and, and the uh, working on the spirituality. I have been uh, giving meditation classes. But in reality, most of my income would come from another source. I was a translator and interpreter. And little by little, I started like losing this source of income. Like, what am I going to do with my life? And then I realized that uh, my soul was pushing me away from that so that I could focus on what I believed on, which is writing more books and teaching about all of these esoteric and uh, stuff for awakening. So that's my advice that I would uh, tell everyone, like just follow your dreams, don't follow right. other people's dreams. Yeah, same here, I absolutely agree. Like I've been, yes. my soul has been shutting down everything that doesn't support what I completely love, right? Yeah. Yes, it's like, and sometimes we have resistance, but it's part of the, uh, exactly. of the awakening that we are experiencing. It's time to uh, escape from the matrix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and become your own matrix because I I do believe that each one of us has a matrix, right? And and with a potential to create your own reality instead of following someone else's dictation of what it is supposed to be. Yes, because um, we have the collective reality and we have the individual reality, but we cannot change the collective reality. Uh, reality. What we can do is change our own individual reality. And then we are connect. We start getting connected to a different collective that is more akin to our individual collective. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Kencho, for sharing your wisdom here. <laughs> and thank I'm you for for more some other time. Yes. And it was a pleasure to to get to know you this way. And very grateful for your books. They they really helped me last year, and and I'm looking forward to more of your books yeah and I, I also want to thank you for inviting me and i'm following your channel <laughs> and i love the explanations that you're doing about uh, astrology because uh, astrology it's 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 like i don't i don't understand why they call it a pseudoscience you know because this is the science of the ancient this is something different than science this is more advanced than science and what, every, every stuff that you've been mentioning in your channel, I've been experiencing it in my life because we are aligned to this, uh, to these cosmic bodies and uh, our story is already written in the stars. Yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. Thank you so much. So I'll leave it here. <laughs> thank you. All right, Esther. So take care and thank you. <laughs>